Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Happy beginning of April and happy end of the week. I hope you're all doing well and staying as sane as possible in the current environment. So as always, at the end of each week, we take a look at how the market has changed. So let's go ahead and take a look at the general freight market, starting with capacity, volumes, rejections, and diesel prices. And then we'll go into specifics for dry vans, reefers, and flatbeds on the spot market to see where the relatively better areas are in order to be at least a step ahead of your competition. Ready? Let's go! All right, first and foremost, we always start by looking at what's happening with the net carrier population. And this week, we saw a decrease of 418 carriers net, which is kind of a relief. I know it sounds horrible, but it is a relief because we have been seeing a positive or an increase, net increase in carrier population a few times in March. Now, if we take a look at outbound volumes in the general freight market for all equipment types, again, as a reminder, or for those of you who are new, the white line represents us in 2024. The blue line is 2023. So we're just comparing the two. And we can see something happened with volumes in April and they just went down like crazy, which is I mean, there is a pattern of them going down in the beginning of April, but not by this much. So that is a little bit concerning. But what about rejections? Well, again, we're comparing this line, the dark blue, which is 2024, to the light blue, which is 2023. And actually, I have some good news for you guys. Even though volumes did kind of crash down uh, in the last few days, rejections did the opposite. They started going up. Now, are they acceptable? Well, not really. Rejections are currently at 3.85%. And this is an increase of almost half a percent week over week, which is not small, but still rejections are pretty crappy. But if we look at this chart as a whole, we can see that this year rejections are doing their own thing. They're not following the 2023 pattern. And hopefully from here on out, they continue going up. But this is just a wait and see moment. Now let's talk about diesel prices. So in terms of diesel prices, we can see we have been kind of bouncing since February where diesel prices skyrocketed. We have been kind of bouncing on the same level. Currently, diesel prices are on average $4.06 per gallon, which is a decrease of $0.02 cents per gallon week over week. Sorry about that. I think the camera recorded my vibe board doing its own thing and going out again. It's in and out. Anyway, let's now focus on the spot market for specific equipment types, starting with dry van trailers. So on the spot market, volume-wise, we can see that volumes are kind of holding steady. They're not really increasing by much. They're not decreasing by much for dry vans for quite a while now. They're all still below the 2023 levels, which is the orange line. And this week we can see there was a tiny little decrease in dry van volumes, but nothing crazy. Now, in terms of dry van spot rates, since around week 10 of this year, spot rates have been very, very slowly climbing up for dry van, still below the $2 mark, still below 2023 levels, but currently dry van spot rates are around $1.89 per mile on average. And this includes the long hauls as well as the short hauls. And of course, $1.89 makes it extremely difficult to cope with expenses because everything is up right now. All the costs are up. And of course, it makes it nearly impossible to hire a driver because of payroll, right? Fuel expenses are high. The costs of repairs and labor are high and the payroll would also be a huge chunk. So $1.89 is definitely not sustainable. But now the question is, where do you need to go next week if you have a dry van? And I 
went back to my previous maps just because I didn't have much time to make the super detailed ones this week, but we should still get a pretty good idea. So here we have two maps, the outbound tender rejections for dry vans and the outbound tender volumes. The darker a market area on either of these maps, the more volume or rejections there are. So we're trying to pair the darkest areas together, right? Because those rejections and that volume, the higher both of them are, are the more volume ends up on the spot market. So currently there are three places that are worth noting. Number one is Green Bay, Wisconsin, which is right here. The rejection rate is 12.73% and the volume is at an index of 60. Then we have Rock Island, Illinois, somewhere right here where the rejection is 11% and the volume is at an index of 58. Finally, we have somewhere in Joplin, Missouri. I'm not actually sure where exactly Joplin, Missouri is, but uh, the rejection is at 10.5% and the volume is at an index of 35, so less volume. Now, if you look at these two maps, you can see that in terms of rejections, there are a ton of them in Jacksonville, Florida. There's also a ton of rejections in the Amarillo, Amarillo. I still don't understand how to pronounce it. And I think it depends on who you ask. Um, El Paso, Texas, there are rejections in Virginia. But then if we compare to volumes, volumes are mostly in Dallas, Texas, Houston, Texas, and Southern California, as well as somewhere around Allentown, Pennsylvania, but we need both volumes and rejections in order to see more stuff get onto the spot market. All right, now let's talk about reefers, starting with the spot volumes. So you can see that volumes have been pretty flat for reefers, um, and right now they went down a little bit. They're somewhere around the 2023 levels on the spot market, so nothing great here, but what about those reefer rates. Well, thankfully, reefer rates actually saw a small increase and they are a little bit above 2023 levels. And right now, on average, reefers are getting $2.25 per mile, including the short hauls as well as the long hauls. So now the question is, where do you need to go with a reefer to grab better opportunities or to be in a better position next week? Once again, we have these two maps, which is the outbound rejection and outbound volumes, but for reefers this time. And again, we're trying to pair two dark market areas, right? So for reefers, there is, of course, the Twin Falls, Idaho area where the rejection is at 12% and volume is at 26, an index of 26. Then we have the Memphis, Tennessee market, which is right here, which has a rejection of 27%. That's why it's pretty dark there, but the volume index is about 10, so not too much volume. Of course, Fargo, North Dakota, it's a big one. <laughs> There's a rejection of 42%. Almost half of the loads get rejected by contract carriers. The volume is 17. And then we have Pendleton, Oregon, right here where the rejection is at 17% and volume at 14. But in terms of, if we are just looking at volume, we can see Southern California, Pennsylvania, a lot of the Eastern states, as well as Tampa, Florida, Lakeland, Florida markets is where the volume is at, and Chicago, Illinois, whereas the rejections are mostly in the Northern states like Fargo, North Dakota, South Dakota, we have Washington, it's just there's not a lot of volume. But yeah, I would recommend sticking to these four markets next week in order to grab a little bit better opportunities. All right, finally, we have our flatbeds. And in terms of volumes on the spot market, we can see that those went down slightly week over week, but they have been above the 2023 levels for the third week in a row, which is nice. And we can see also from the five-year average, which is the dotted line right there, that usually volumes do decrease slightly for flatbeds around this time. Now, what about the rate per mile? Well, the rate per mile for flatbeds actually saw a small increase. Now the average rate per mile is around $2.49, but it's way below the 2023 levels, unfortunately. And I'm not sure if it's going to actually hit the 2023 levels anytime soon or go above it, but the pattern is being maintained. 
So in terms of where to go for flatbeds, for those of you who are new, unfortunately, I don't have these fancy maps that Sonar provides for flatbeds. They don't have enough data on them. So I create my own using truck stop data. And they are pretty general because we're looking not at market areas, but at states in general. But it gives us an idea. So first we have the volume map for the flatbed using truck stop data. The lighter an area, the less loads there are coming out of those markets. The darker it is, the more loads are coming out of those markets. In general, week over week, volumes really did increase in the southern, some of the midwestern states, as well as like Pennsylvania, some of the eastern states. But they remained pretty much unchanged and completely flat in the plain states. But what about the truck capacity for flatbeds? Well, anything that is light is where there are not enough trucks. So the lightest areas are less than 200 trucks and the darkest ones are over 3000 trucks, right? So week over week capacity actually decreased in Oregon, Mississippi and Alabama. And it increased in Illinois, Florida, there's North Carolina and Virginia. So more trucks are now uh, right here as well as Illinois. But of course, the biggest question is where do you have negotiating power? And in order to figure that out, you need to take a look at load to truck ratios. Where are there more loads available than trucks in the market? That is going to give you an idea of where shippers and brokers are struggling to actually get these loads moved. So again, anything that is red is a place where there is less than one load per truck beige like georgia south carolina pennsylvania california this is about a load per truck so there's kind of an equal amount of loads compared to the amount of trucks anything yellow like arkansas and louisiana this is about two loads per truck and anything green is over three loads for the first time since i started showing these maps we see that oregon now has over three loads per truck which is super interesting mississippi alabama always have three loads per truck pretty much. And then also Maryland has over three loads per truck. Now, something to also remember, Mississippi, Alabama are pretty solid places where you can pretty much always negotiate a really, really good rate uh, relative to the rest of the market. Oregon, however, you have to remember that a lot of trucks are going to be deadheading from Washington, Idaho, and somewhere in Redding, California to Oregon and kind of diluting the situation. Now, again, as a reminder, someone made a comment about this and I agree. It's a very general view of the market because you have to remember that a place like Pennsylvania that has around one load per truck, you can still get a really, really good rate per mile going from Pennsylvania to somewhere like Oregon. Because even though there are so many trucks there, a lot of them don't want to go to the Rockies or through the Rockies to go to the Pacific Northwest. From a place like Houston, Texas, maybe even Dallas, Texas or Fort Worth, Texas, you can get a pretty decent rate per mile also going to California or Oregon or Washington. So even though this state has over capacity, there are not enough loads. You have to remember that a lot of this capacity is pretty picky about where they will and will not go. But this gives you a general idea of where you will really have an easy time and where it's going to be a little bit more of a challenge when it comes to booking loads. So it looks like in general, volumes and rejections have kind of switched places uh, this week. Volumes are now dropping, whereas rejections are starting to climb up. There are some good news this week as well, such as diesel prices, they're a little bit lower week over week. And of course, the fact that capacity has seen a net decrease in carrier population. Now, from my personal experience, I can't say that the spot market is completely dead as a whole. It's not. But what I can say is that it is very dead in most areas. And I find myself struggling where to send my trucks or how to end up in the market areas where I need them to end up. This week alone, I had two trucks that were stuck in horrible places, one in Montana, the other one in Colorado. Colorado. Don't ask me in what kind of state of mind I was when I was booking those loads in the first place, but 
they ended up there and the only reason they were not dead heading out is because both of them ended up grabbing a recovery load which of course usually pays much better than the market rate as i always say luck does play quite a big role when it comes to the trucking industry but it's something that i refuse to rely on because it's not measurable or repeatable Anyway, guys, thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you have an amazing rest of your week and weekend. Stay safe, stay healthy, and keep learning. And I will see you in the next video.